I don't know if I'm recording. There we go, I'm live, now I'm live. Hey everybody, my name is Steve Dale, here to talk about separation anxiety in our pets as our kids go back to school, as we go back to school. Oh, there's a comment section. So, here's what I would love. I would love for you to ask questions, offer comments, additional help for the 10 to 15 minutes approximately, maybe 17 minutes, that I will be talking with you rather than at you. So for the live segment, I mean, this is going to be posted on Facebook forever and ever, right? However, while I'm live, I'm happy to converse with you. Vet Shows US, thank you. I'm happy to be here. And it's because of you doing this, understanding that truly we are going to have a problem. We're experiencing that already with our dogs having more separation distress as a result of our schedules changing yet again. A couple things I want to say first. Uh, well, I want to explain who I am. My name is Steve Dale. Thank you so much for being here. And I do sincerely hope I can help you out. I'm a certified animal behavior consultant. I host uh, radio shows. I contribute to books, veterinary books, and books for the general public, either which way. I'm happy to do it. I write for a variety of publications from veterinary practice news to Catster uh, to being a contributor for the Veterinary National Association of Veterinary Technicians in America. That's very official, isn't it? In addition to that, I was a, oh, I wrote the introduction to a book called Decoding Your Cats, authored by these guys, members of the American College of Veterinary Behaviorists. It follows a book called Decoding Your Dog, and it's out right now. We're not talking cats at this very moment. I'm happy to come back and do that at some point. Uh, but I am talking dogs, and I want to talk about this issue of separation anxiety. So the first question is, who is going to have it? Among which dogs, when we change our schedules, uh, drastically in the household. We go back to work, the kids go back to school. If that happens in your household, what is eventually, if it doesn't happen next week or next month, eventually we hope it will happen, right? So what about these dogs that are spending so much time with us? Which dogs are we going to look at and say, okay, those dogs are the dogs that are most likely to have this issue. I'll describe exactly what the issue looks like in a moment, but they fall into three buckets. First, dogs that previously have had even successfully treated separation anxiety, they are automatically, because there's such a dramatic change that's going to happen, predisposed to potentially having this issue. Second group of dogs, uh, those are dogs that have happily, hooray for you, we've adopted out, uh, we're rescuing, we're fostering like we never have before. That's wonderful, isn't it? That, and it is. That group of dogs, maybe we've never left. And some say, and there's data to support, that this group of dogs, they're more predisposed to have separation anxiety in the first place, especially if they've been rehomed previously a couple of times. Now, there's conflicting data on that, but no matter, this is a bucket that does count. Third bucket are just dogs who have difficulty with change. You know, just like me, just like you, when there's a big change that occurs, some people, it's like they roll with it just like that. Some dogs do too, but some dogs do not. Now, how do I know all of what I just said? I don't know. It's based on what we know about separation anxiety, but we've never had a global pandemic recently where we've had to do this and shelter in place and quarantine ourselves and be there with the dogs 24-7, day in and day out for an extended period of time. So there's no previous data to really look at. But we are looking at dogs that have separation anxiety and data about those individual dogs. Now, it's very important to understand a couple things. First of all, I am talking really fast because I only have about 10 or 15 minutes here. But uh, at some point in time, at uh, one of the Vet Shows US, oh, amazing conferences, by the way, if you've never attended one and if you are a veterinary professional, you need to go when they return. I don't know, Las Vegas, New York, Chicago, London, I'm, I'm missing a few I know, but they are great conferences and maybe I could talk about this in far more detail at the conference. But what I can tell you right now is this, that sometimes when clients, when pet parents, and I know pet parents may be watching this also, uh, are inclined to think their dog has separation anxiety, they may be right, but they may not be right. Uh, so what's really important is that you encourage people to use this thing, you know, 
to use their phone. I'm going to take a picture of me while I'm at it. So I can say, look what I did. <laughs> how about that? Um, I wish I could take a picture of all of you. Uh, I don't know how many of you there are, but that's okay. Um, where was I? So how do we know it's separation anxiety? Because using one of these, not necessarily one of these, but setting up a camera in the client's home, and those are pretty inexpensive these days, you can see, or your client can see anyway, in real time, what's going on with their dog. And then you can watch that video later. They can even, even they don't need to come in. They can email you that video. And here's why that's important. You as a professional can look at that video and say, you know what, maybe this dog was never uh, learned to be home alone. It's like a Macaulay Culkin of dogs and cannot be home alone. Was that the right movie? In any which case, uh, that dog's just having a good time and, and, in, and going crazy, just having ordering in pizza, not separation anxiety. Uh, the dog could be barking at the window, not because the dog has separation anxiety, but because the dog is uh, being self-reinforced by the people walking by. The dog goes woof, 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 and the people keep going, and I did my job. I scared them away. You know, those dogs do tend to do that when their people are home as well as when they're away. But then some of you think, oh, I'm away. The dog is barking and my neighbor's complaining. The dog must have separation anxiety, maybe, but maybe not. In addition to that, there are other issues. You know, uh, the dog uh, may be uh, having so, some sort of medical issue. So maybe chewing on itself because that dog is in pain. Uh, that's actually a possibility. So definitely a veterinary professional look at that video you know what um if if my dog is drinking a lot of water i don't automatically go to the internet and say diabetes is a possibility in fact it's likely go out and get insulin and give that to my dog i need veterinary input for it and and a diagnosis and separation anxiety is the same way all right, so I've got like eight minutes here and I want to talk for the rest of the time. Let's assume it's separation anxiety, not a dog just having a party, not a dog that just never learned to be home alone. And incidentally, not a dog that's not getting enough enrichment at home, enough exercise at home. Having said that, if the dog truly has separation anxiety, they used to say back in the day, a good dog is a tired dog. And yes, there is absolute truth to that. Having said that, if the dog truly has particularly, uh, I don't know, I, I don't, red zone <laughs> separation anxiety, more severe separation anxiety. What you're going to have if you take your dog on a five mile run is now a tired dog with separation anxiety. That's not in of itself going to solve the problem. However, I want to talk about enrichment for just a moment because enriching that environment and also in many other ways, allowing that dog to do what that dog was bred to do in the first place. Another talk I give, by the way, that I think is a really cool talk, uh, because we are not allowing our dogs to be dogs, and we're not allowing beagles at times to do what they were bred to do, and that's sniff anything they possibly can. We're not allowing border collies, a perfect example, to herd anything since we don't have sheep at home. But there are ways to substitute for that to provide appropriate enrichment for those dogs. And that is part, he says, of a solution to prevent separation anxiety, potentially, and also part of a solution to deal with it. And there are all sorts of products out there as well as behavior modification. Now, I'm not going to have time to go through every potential product here. Psychopharmaceuticals, that's one possibility. And they definitely can work. And that definitely may be the answer. I know a lot of you say, clients say, I don't want to use drugs. I don't want to zone out my pet. You're not zoning out your pet. What you're doing is you're making the behavior modification possible. You're toning down the anxiety to make some other less invasive products more workable. But another product that's new and I love that in fact, I, I believe is a, it, we think it can be in as just as effective or uh, just as effective as psychopharmaceuticals is this thing here. It's called the calmer canine. And what you do literally, it works by uh, pulsed electromagnetic fields. It impacts the amygdala in the brain, which actually gets swollen when these dogs are incredibly anxious. The neurochemicals change in a way that is not positive. Nothing you want to see because you see more stress hormones, less oh, positive hormones that make you feel good like serotonin. So you literally put this 
over the dog's head like this. You turn it on like this. Little light goes up and down like that. Uh, it's from a CCASSI, a ASSISI, Animal Health. And you have a little vest here if you so desire, or a bigger vest for a bigger dog that you put on the dog and it just holds over the head like that. Or you can literally, as your dog is snoozing and you're watching TV, hold it over the dog's head. It really, science so far, demonstrates this really can be incredibly effective. How about this? How about a probiotic that actually helps to calm dogs? There is such a thing, and here it is. It's called, I'm gonna take a, it's called Calming Care. It's by Purina. It's easy enough to come by. For any of this, for you that are clients, that are pet parents, please ask your veterinarian before doing anything and before creating a plan, which is what I like. You can also contact a veterinary behaviorist where you live or a member of the International Association of Animal Behavior Consultants, which is uh, the organization that I belong to, dacvb.org for the Veterinary Behaviorist, International Association of Animal Behavior Consultants, iaabc.org. Here's a nutraceutical called Zilkeen. It's a milk product. We know milk has all kinds of calming stuff in it. Without going into detail about what those things are, I will say this, it can help tone down anxiety. For more severe separation anxiety though, we're talking this for starters, takes a couple weeks to kick in, or psychopharmaceuticals, some happen immediately, some take longer to kick in. Now, very quickly, about behavior modification. There are three or four or five things that people can do to help. What helps one dog, may not help another dog or may help a bit. So we combine these things and it gets very confusing for clients. So I'm so happy the products right there that are here are available and other products too, are, and the psychopharmaceuticals truthfully are available now because the uh, behavior modification certainly can help. But as I say, when, you give, when, I, when we give clients too many things to do all at once and some of it is complicated. Um, are all of these good for all size dogs, CZ? Yes, is the short answer to that. Now, oh, by the way, I'm running out of time, so please, please, questions, comments. I want to see them, I want to read them, I want to hear them. So while I'm waiting for more of those, one of the things that we hear about is uh, leaving, um, oh, what's the right word for it? Uh, coming and going at uh, unpredictable times. Um, so what you do is you leave the house without saying anything to, to the dog at all, for, I don't know, like a minute, literally. So you, you might wanna leave something special for the dog, by the way, uh, an amazing treat only given to that dog as you leave the house, an amazing treat. If the dog begins to scarf it up, you know whatever you're doing, by the way, is working, assuming you have a food motivated dog, which not all dogs are, but of course most are. So graduated comings and goings, that was the word I was looking for, I apologize, I'm talking so fast, I can't even think of the right word. So. What you do is you leave for a minute or so, uh, everyone has to leave for a minute or so, then come back, pretty much ignore the dog. And these dogs are hyper attached to us. So that's really hard to do, right? You have a dog, that is the reason why we have dogs. So crazy to see us, but I, yeah, sure. Say hello to the dog, but don't be effusive. Oh, I missed you so much. Barely say hello to the dog, barely acknowledge the dog until the dog calms down. So you leave a minute, then you leave two minutes, then you leave four minutes, then you leave two minutes. You kind of go back and forth, six minutes, four minutes, eight minutes, six minutes, 10 minutes, eight minutes, 15 minutes, four minutes, you know, you just randomly, there is no schedule for this per se that I know of, and you leave uh, for a very little bit of time and then gradually build that up, but taking it back as well so it's a bit unpredictable. When that camera that you've set up shows you or your client your dog is doing better, well, you know your dog is doing better. Here's what doesn't work ever, ever doing nothing. So some people think the dog will realize that I'm coming back, no problem. It may be a week, it may be a month, but the dog will figure it out. Sometimes that can happen, but that is so, so the exception to the rule. Uh, I have a Yorkie and if I leave the house more than one or two times a day, she'll start to be destructive. Uh, she'll rip tissues in the bathroom, not eat them, just rip in, into shreds. Now that's a sign of separation anxiety, however, it sounds like if you leave 
once or twice, it's fine. But if you leave three or four times, it's not as fine. So it could be that the shiorki is not getting enough enrichment. Leave things that are appropriate for the yorkie to rip apart when you're not home. So this might or might not, I'm not in a position to say so here. I don't know your dog, but it might not be separation anxiety. It might just be that your yorkie, even a little dog like a yorkie, little cute dog with a bowl, doesn't have enough to do. So leave amazing treats stuffed in toys. And now they have CBD treats. Do they help calm dogs? I don't know. And I didn't, I'm not supposed to encourage CBD, but I didn't, did I? But, but they're there. Uh, and you have all these other products that are available that may help, but I'll tell you if your dog loves them, loves them, loves them, not if your dog tolerates them or will eat them because, well, why not? Your dog really loves them and you leave them in something and only leave that toy when you are on your way out, that is helpful. I am more than out of time now. I thank you very much for the opportunities. I, I thank Vet Shows US, especially for giving me this opportunity to jump on their page to talk to you. 2020, nothing like it, but 2021 has got to be better. I mean, it's got to be, right? So I hope to see you in person at their veterinary meetings, which are absolutely terrific if you've not been the one. And it's an excuse to go to New York and go to a Broadway show if it's the New York Vet Show. If it's Chicago, it's an excuse to come here to Chicago where I live. Welcome to my living room and take a cruise out on Lake Michigan or do the architecture tour or something of that nature because the show is right on the Chicago River. Well, not literally on the river. That would be, we'd be all too wet. Uh, however, Labrador retrievers would love it. Thank you once again very, very much for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Now, I have to figure out how to close out of here. I think I know. Take care.